previous iterations of this class, uh, the average was like two or three on that quiz. And the average on this was probably nine. I mean, there were a whole bunch of, of tens in here. Okay, so we are picking up with chapter 15. And like I said, we'll have a quiz over this on, yeah, whatever it is we meet next. Monday, um, that'll give you some time over the weekend to go back and review stuff. Remember, we're assuming we finish today, we'll start the next book Monday, Castle of Lear. We'll probably have a quiz over it on Friday of next week. So, chapter 15. They've, they've been, you know, talking about what they can do to get the Black Cauldron from the three old ladies. Terrence offered some things. Ilanwi offers her bauble. Fluter offers his um, harp. Gurgi offers his wallet. That is, they've each seemingly offered the thing that is most valuable to them. Okay? Terrence says, wait. In response, top of page 126. When Orthu says, farewell, my outlets. Unfortunate you couldn't strike a bargain with us, but, you know, that's the way things are. Go ahead, leave. Taryn, wait. Ilanwi, notice, realizing his intent, cries out and catches his arm. That is, Taryn hasn't offered everything, or to put it more accurately, he hasn't offered his most treasured thing. There is one thing more. The brooch I wear. The gift of Adion, son of Taliesin. She goes, well, a brooch? What brooch? Tell me more. You've been toying with us, Taryn says. You saw that I wore Adion's clasp from the moment we came here. You knew it for what it was. Does that matter? It is still your choice whether you will bargain with it. Yes, we know the brooch well. Minwi, son of Tyr, go ahead, first to the bards. Fresh. Okay, so she's just told Taryn a little bit of the history of this brooch. It's an heirloom. It's Years old. It's not just something Taliesin gave to his son. The very first bard of Pradane made this thing. Okay? Taryn, you could have taken it. You could have killed us and just taken it. Do you not understand? Like knowledge, truth, and love themselves, the three things that the marks on the brooch are symbolic of, the clasp must be given willingly, or its power is broken. So if Adion had died, and Taryn had just kind of, you know, stripped his body of the goods, it wouldn't have done anything for him. And it is indeed filled with power. This too, you must understand. That is, you must understand, before you give this thing up to us, what its real worth is. For men, we the bard cast a mighty spell on it, filled it with dreams, wisdom, visions, or vision. With such a clasp, a duckling could win much glory and honor. Notice what she's just done. What could this clasp bring to Taryn? The thing he wants most, glory. It could fulfill his dreams. Who can tell? He might rival all the heroes of Pradane, even Gwydion. You keep this thing, you use the, you might even be greater than Gwydion. Think carefully. Now, is this a temptation? <laughs> Once given up, it won't come to you, you won't get it back. Will you exchange it for an evil cauldron you intend only to destroy? Notice, they understand their intentions. That is, the three women understand the intentions of Taryn and his friends. So you're willing to give up this thing that can bring you everything you want in life in order to have something that all you want to do is destroy. Flute is willing to do the same thing with his heart, etc., etc. Taryn recalled with bitter clarity the joys of sight and scent, dewdrops, etc. Gurgi. Once more there came to him the pride of strength and knowledge. And he looked at the cauldron at his feet. Yes, this shall be my bargain. 
he undo, undoes the clasp. As he dropped the bit of iron into Ordu's stretched, outstretched hand, it was as though a light flickered and died in his heart. What was the light? Was it that knowledge, all that secret wisdom he had about the world? Done. The brooch for the croaking. Okay. The companions stand in silence and dismay. And so Taryn says, it's ours. Right? It's ours. So we can do with it as we please? Well, yeah, of course. No question. So iron's hammers, you know, in your stable. So we can we can destroy it. Or or do we have to buy those too? Do we have to give you something else? She goes, no, no, go ahead. Buy. Use, use all the hammers you want. All right. He leads the companions and he says, I understand what you were all trying to do. Each of you would have given up what you treasured most for my sake. Why for his sake? So that he wouldn't have to give up the brooch? When Fluter offers the harp, is he thinking about Terran and Adion's brooch? I'm glad Ordu didn't take your harp, Fluter. I know how unhappy you'd be without your music. Even more than I without my brooch. How good of a harpist, a bard, is Fluter? Yeah, he's kind of shaky there. Gurgi, you should never have tried to sacrifice your food on my account. Alanwi, your ring and your bauble are much too useful and beautiful to exchange for an ugly croaking. And they're going to get really important in the next book. Okay? All these things are doubly precious now, and so are you. Why? So are you. The fact that each of them was willing to offer that thing they treasured most shows that they were really willing to offer what? Their greatest possession. Their greatest possession, which is? Themselves. Fluter was really offering himself. Ilan was really offering himself. Gurgi was really offering himself. Okay? So... They go, they get the hammers, they start whacking on the thing, and it won't break. You should have told us what you intended. You know, you, you can't do it that way. Now, go back for a second. What did Ordu say? You, you want to exchange it for the cauldron, which you just want to destroy. Well, you should have told us, she then says on 129, what you intended. What does she mean, what you intended? Not... To destroy the cauldron. How? Notice what was not included in the bargain. Knowledge, Knowledge on how to destroy it. You'll never destroy the croaking that way. Gurgi, about to crawl inside the croaking and attack it from within, stopped to listen. What would have happened had he crawled inside? Nothing? He has to know what it's doing. Intent is important. He has to know, if he's crawling inside, that he is crawling inside to do what? To break the power of the Black Cauldron. Okay? He's just crawling inside to try to destroy it from within, not the other way. Okay? So... Lost in my place. Gurgi goes. Back. What page is that? 129. There it is, right there. So, Taryn says, tell us, what's the only way to destroy it? A living person must climb into it. Here's the other part, I think, you know, if Gurgi had call, crawled in. Is Gurgi a quote-unquote person? Does person refer to human? Because Gurgi's subhuman. He's kind of midway between animal and humanity. A living person must climb into it. When he does, the croaking will shatter. The only problem is the person who goes in doesn't come back out. See, normally with the black cauldron, if you throw a person unwillingly in, that person comes out as one of the cauldron born. Their humanity is dead. They become essentially a zombie. 
Or if you dig up a corpse and throw that in, that comes out as essentially a zombie. Gurgi, you know, no backs away. She goes, yeah. The crow can only cost you a brooch, but it will cost only life to destroy it. Whoever gives up his life to the croaking must give it willingly, knowing full well what he does. In other words, whoever, quote unquote, gives up his life to the croaking must be doing what? Sacrificing him or herself. Okay? Now we'll say, really, we'll really say for a while. In other words, now that you really know what you came to know, Karen, wait, wait, there's no other way? Nope. So, they have a decision to make. What are they going to do with it? Terrence says, there's got to be something else we can do. We can't destroy it. Well, they can, right? Any one of them can. It's just, they don't want to, because it... Fluter, hide it. Bury it. As soon as possible can't hide it. Why? Sooner or later it'll be discovered again. Nope. Dalvin. We'll take it to Dalvin. He'll know what to do with it. Well, what do they already know? It has to be done with it. Somebody's got to be willing to go inside it. Is Dalvin going to be willing to? He alone has the wisdom to deal with the cauldron. Gwydion himself planned to bring it. Okay? So, they go on and page 132. Ilanwi comes up to Tara and puts her hand on his shoulder. I realize it's no consolation to you, but if you look at it one way, you didn't give up a thing to the Enchantresses. Not really. Okay, now, how do you think when she says that, that immediately sits in his mind? He gave up the thing that enabled him to understand, to feel, to sense a change in the wind, to smell water, yards away, to hear animals miles away, to be quote-unquote in tune, totally, completely, perfectly with nature. Okay, yeah, you exchanged the clasp and everything went along with it, but you know, those didn't come from the clasp. Those came from inside you. I think it would have been much worse giving up a summer day. Remember, they asked him, give us your, the memory of your best summer day. Why? That's part of you, Taryn. The class came from outside. That memory is something of yours. I mean, I know I shouldn't want to give up a single one of mine, or even a winter day for the matter of that. So when you come right down to it, or you didn't take anything from you, why, you're still yourself. And you can't deny that. He says, yes, I am. I am still only Assistant Pig Keeper. What is Taryn saying when he says that? What is he equating? His sense of worth. His sense of who he is with what he does. In that sense, then, Gwydion is solely, so to speak, a warrior. So what's Gurgi? An eater? What's Fluter? A harpist? That's it? Nothing else? No more? I should have known anything else was too good to last. What do you mean anything else? What did the class make him start to think about it? Keep going. What can he do with the clasp? Be a hero. Be a hero. Everything. I don't. I don't mean what Orthu says. You know, have your dreams fulfilled, all that kind of stuff. You know, but when they're walking through the forest, when they're walking through the marshes, he hears the squirrels, or he perceives the squirrels. He sees the ants. He understands the language of the trees and the birds and all that. He's not just an assistant pig keeper. He's kind of becoming like whom? 
that he apparently respects. There they go. <clears throat> and now, that possibility, gone. Now, I just wash and feed pigs. I laundry. You might be right. Notice, I laundry always. Does she ever have just the right word? It's like she's almost there. It's just slightly off the mark. But as far as being an assistant pig keeper is concerned, you're a perfectly marvelous one. Now, why say that? What is she saying about assistant pig keeping? There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, let's let's go from the world of Perdane to our world. What would be in our society, which is a pretty much a non-agrarian, non-farming society, but what would be an equivalent to assistant pig keeping? Louder? Being a garbage man. What else? How about flipping burgers? Working at a gas station. How many people do you know really have as their life's goal to flip burgers for McDonald's for their the rest of their life? Probably not many. Okay. So what is she saying? You can still be the greatest burger flipper there is. And there's what? There's no shame in that. Remember what Adion said about honor? There's more on her where? In a field well tilled than in a field soaked with blood. Right? You're a perfectly marvelous one. Believe me, there's no question. You're the best assistant pig keeper in all per day. Is he the only assistant pig keeper? Obviously not. So she's telling him, Taryn. It's okay to be who you are. Just what? You know, one of the military mottos is be all you can be. <coughs> now, that might mean, I think it's the Navy, that might mean join the Navy. Right? But it might also be what? Be all you can be where? Where you are. What you're doing, okay? How many others there are? I don't know, but that's beside the point. I doubt a single one of them would have done what you did. All these other assistant pig keepers, she says, would have done what? They would have reached for that brass ring. They would have gone for the gold. They would have said, hell no, I'm not going to be an assistant pig keeper. I'm keeping this, this brooch. I couldn't have done otherwise. Not if we were to gain the cauldron. In other words, the cauldron is what's important. What isn't? From Terrence thinking. Me. Me. Or they said they were interested in things as they are. Notice, present tense, right now. Not things as they were in the past. Not things as they might be in the future. I believe now they are concerned with things as they must be. There's three of them, remember? Three fates. Adion knew there was a destiny laid on him. He didn't run from it. But it cost him his life. She says, okay. Or he says, okay. If there is a destiny laid on me, I shall face it. I hope only that I may face it as well as Adion did. Is. Alon me. What else? Don't, don't, don't forget this. You won the cauldron. For whom? For Gwydion and for all of us. Notice who she says you didn't win it for. You didn't win it for himself. Who wants to get it for himself? We've already heard. Okay, yeah, I mean, he comes up later. Morgan. Who else? Who was part of this group? Eladir. 
Why does he want it for himself? What will it bring him? Glory. glory. The glory of having wanted it. All right? She says, for that alone. Uh, that's one thing nobody can take away from you. For that alone, you have every reason to be proud. He says, yep. Yep, this much have I done. Yeah, woo, yay for me. Because what does that really mean? You want it, not for yourself, but for everybody else. What does he mean when he says, yeah, yeah, this much have I done? Big freaking deal, right? What good does that do? Think of the Black Cauldron, not as a Black Cauldron, but, you know, the suitcase nuclear bomb. What does he still not know? Uh, how to defuse it. So what happens if it falls into the wrong hands? It can still be used. All right. The river. We're going to skip a bit. They try to get across the river. They can't. Page 136. They can't get another. They don't have enough hands, enough strength, etc. Terran tries. Top of 137. He nearly sinks into the ground. And he says, top of that page, There is a destiny laid on us that the Crokin shall never reach Caradalbin. What does he mean there's a destiny laid on us? The world is against me. Any of you ever felt that way? No matter what you do, it's the wrong decision. Every That's how terror feels. No matter what I do, it's the wrong thing. I lawn me. Nonsense. If you stop now, then you've given up Addie Ellen's brooch for nothing. In other words, come on, Terran, you can do it. Just a little more strength, scrawny little 13-year-old. Come on, you can lift this cauldron. Okay. They keep talking. And Terran says, it's no good. It's no good. Alani, okay, so then we can't just sit here until Gwithaints or something even more disagreeable find us. And we can't go back to Ordu and offer to exchange the Crokin again. She's kind of cutting through his, his fog of depression, of doubt, and saying, um, time's wasting. If we sit here, the Gwithaints are going to find us, in which case Oran's going to find us. And we can't take it back, because they already said, <laughs> once you buy it, it's yours, kind of a thing. Taryn goes, okay. We'll keep trying. I know it's going to fail. We'll keep trying. All right? Fluter. 139. The Crokin rolls over onto its side, which means the top of it is now kind of open. It gets filled with water, right? So now it's even heavier. Because now they have the weight of the Black Cauldron itself plus the weight of whatever amounts of water is in it. Fluter says, middle 139, terrible, terrible. A flame is always cheerful, but this is too much to bear. I long, it's an accident, you can't, you know. It will never be the same. It's the fault of that beastly croaken. The wretched thing struck at me deliberately, I'm sure. Taryn, you'll be all right. Of course, you won't be able to move your arm, because his arms hurt, etc. And... Page 141, who shows up? Eladir, seemingly in the nick of time. And we get chapter 17, The Choice. Taryn asks Eladir, What do you hear? You dare speak of Adion? He is slain, lies beneath. You know, we got the cock croaking. The price was Adion's life, blah, 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 blah. Skip a bunch. Go to 144. Eladir says, you know, he's been fleeing from the huntsmen. Terran says, great, you've led him to us. In the middle of 144, Eladir, when Terran says, you snuck away, sneaked away. Sneaked away, son of Penelark who does not sneak. You are too slow-footed for me. There are matters of urgency. Yeah, Terrence says, your glory. You thought of nothing else. He says, yeah, that's true. I did mean to go through the March of the Morva. Okay. 
Eleanor, you've been to Mormon? And Jared says, yes. Okay. So Eleanor says, and you failed again. 145. Taryn, failed? No. We have the cauldron. There it is. Okay. Notice what that means. We have the cauldron. There it is. Notice, it's not like they're carrying it. Okay. So they kind of have the cauldron. You know, there's a phrase, um, possession is what? Nine-tenths. Nine-tenths of ownership. In other words, there's that one-tenth, you know, it makes it a little debatable. Eladir is going to seize on that one-tenth. He says, how? How? 145. Have you cheated me once more? Do I risk my life again so that a pig boy may rob me of my prize? He grabs Taryn by the throat. Taryn strikes his hand away. Your prize, your life, blah, 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 blah. And Taryn explains to him, the only way to destroy the Black Cauldron is for someone to... Give up his life in it. Okay? And notice Eladir asks an all-important question. Bottom of that page. Would you be a hero? Okay, that the word, the verb would from will comes from the Old English. It really means, its real meaning is desire. Like, I will go to the store tomorrow really means I desire to go to the store tomorrow. Would means, did you desire? Okay. Did you desire to be a hero, big boy? Yes, he did. Why do you not climb into it yourself? Come on. You want to be a hero? What kind of hero does Taryn want to be? A living, breathing hero. Right? You can be a hero and be dead. People tell stories about you. They sing songs about you. They come and put flowers on your grave. But that's not the kind of hero he wants. He wants to be able to enjoy the fruits of his heroics. Come on, you're bold enough. Or are you a coward at heart? Okay. So, Eladir offers to help. On what conditions? That he gets all the glory. Okay? 147. Here's the conditions. Crokin is mine. You will be under my command. It is I who found it, not you. It is I who fought for it and what notice fought for it and won it, not exchanged something for it. And you shall say all this to Gwydion and the others. And you have to swear on a binding oath. Arlan, hell no. <laughs> not gonna happen. Okay. And Taryn agrees. Why? He's agreeing to give up what? Really, ultimately. All the glory. All the glory. All the honor. All the heroism that it took. Okay. Eladir, top of 148. Taryn says, I have paid for my honor more dearly than you would pay for yours. Do you ask me now to cast it away? You, pig boy, dared reproach me for seeking glory, said Eladir. Yet you yourself cling to it with your dirty hands. My terms, take it or leave it. You cling to your honor. Taryn, if I swear this, then... They have to swear along with me, right? And he's like, yeah. Along with it's not right. Taryn, we don't speak of rightness. We speak of black. A task to be finished. That is, it's, not, it's really neither right nor wrong. We have a job to do. <coughs> the job is the most important thing. What is Taryn suggesting through that? Again, it's not about me. It's not about Taryn. It's not about Along with It's not about Gurgi. It's not about Fluter. It's about what? It's not about Eladir. It's about destroying the cauldron. Why? So that no one else need ever die because of it. Okay? Terrence says, we'll do it. Okay? They get the cauldron out, and Eladir takes it. Chapter 18. 
skip on a bit and page 154 we hear the four talking and Taryn shakes his head middle of the page and says I fear the black beast has swallowed him up as Adion warned I pity Eladir from the bottom of my heart so what is the black beast Is it pride? And if you want to throw in that verb or that adjective, is it arrogance? What else could it be? Jealousy. Jealousy? And it's companion envy. Notice what he says. Pity Eladir. Well, Adion pitied Eladir too. And Taryn early was like, I don't pity him. He's a smart ass. You know? For long, I hated him. But in the little while I bore Adion's brooch, I believe I saw him more clearly. His heart is unhappy and tormented. Nor shall I forget what he said to me that I taunted him for seeking glory, yet clung to it myself. That is, when Eladir said that to Taryn, Taryn is saying, what is the effect of Eladir's words? It's true. Yep. And it stung. Taryn spreads his hands in front of him with dirty hands. In other words, I wasn't acting entirely how? Selflessly. Or unselfishly. I don't want to be, don't pay any attention to what Eladir says. He has no right to blame. And Terrence says, and yet he spoke the truth. He spoke the truth. Did he? Well, it was only too true. For his own honor, he would have slain us all. They keep talking. 155. Fluter's arm still hurt. And Taryn says, You have all done more than I could ever ask. Alach, alas, much better than I. Yes, it would be useless now to seek Eladir, as useless as our quest has been. How useless has their quest been? They found the Black Cauldron. That's not useless. Who doesn't have it? Put it that way. Iran doesn't have it, so that's still good. Okay, and Eladir is not as bad as Iran. Yet it would be useless, as useless as our quest has been. We have forfeited all for nothing. Adion's brooch, our honor, and now the croaking itself. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back home. Empty-handed. Eladir was right. It is not fitting for a pig boy to seek the same honor as a prince. And yet, by using that exact language, by saying it's not fitting, what is Taryn really saying? I should have the same honor as a prince. That's what he's really saying. When he says, it is not fitting for a pig boy to seek the same honor as a prince. He's going home how? In his mind. Loser. Tail between his legs. And the reason he has that mentality is because he thinks I shouldn't be a loser. Okay. I longly. Pig boy. Don't ever speak of yourself that way, Taryn of Caradalbin. She does. <laughs> so, I mean, he could go, well, you call me that all the time. Why? No matter what has happened, you're not a pig boy. Oh, no, she's going to use the correct title. You're an assistant pig keeper. That's honor in itself. How so? More honor in a field well tilled. How is there honor in a field, field well tilled? And I'm not talking about it can bring life, it can bring nourishment, it can grow. It's hard work. It's hard work. There's one word in that phrase that's all important. Well. In a field well tilled. Because how can you till a field? How can you 
Make a hamburger for somebody you don't know and you don't care about. You can do a crappy job, right? I mean, if your boss not is not looking over your shoulder, what might you do? Cut a few corners, maybe not cook it all the way. Maybe not till the field deep enough. Maybe not break up all the clods. Maybe not break up all the weeds. You know, do a half-ass job. Why? Who's going to know the difference? Well, the person doing the tilling or the burger flipping will. She says, not that, they do, not that they don't mean the same thing, but one is proud and the other isn't. What does she mean, one is proud and the other isn't? Assistant pig keeper, that's proud. Pig boy, that isn't. So since you have a choice, take the one. Taryn. Adion once told me there is honor. There is more honor in a field well plowed than a field steeped in blood. And as he spoke, his heart seemed to lighten. I see now what he said was true above all. I do not begrudge Eladir his prize. I too shall seek honor, but I shall seek it where I know it will be found. Where is that? Where does he know honor will be found? In his own vision. In his own vision? Where else? Shelby's right. Where is that vision? Wherever he is. Where does Eladir think honor is to be found? Out there. Where did Tarrant think honor was to be found at the beginning of the first novel? Out there, not in Cairdalvin. That's why it was important when we get to the end of that first novel. And Gwydion is offering to grant him a gift, a wish. Notice he doesn't say, I want to march into battle on your right hand. What does he say? Like a little kid. I want to go home. I want to go home. And now he realizes near the end of this book, where can he find honor? Being the best assistant pig keeper I can. That is an, an in and of itself honorable. So they go on and they meet up, are captured, discovered by Morgant. Page 157. Okay. Taryn tells them what they've done. Morgan says, you know, I, I don't reproach your spirit, top of 158. Um, but I would have you understand Lord Gwydion himself would hesitate to make a decision of such weight. Because Jared says, we found out where the call, we, and he's like, you know, even Gwydion wouldn't have done that. All right? They talk about Gwistle and the fair folk and such. Morgan tells Eilon, we, you know, Gwistle is not an idiot that you think he is. Among all who hold the way, post crystal of the fair folk is the shrewdest and bravest, etc., etc. Um, and then Morgan says, Eladir has done us noble service. Yes, we have the Black Cauldron. And what does Ilan we do? She completely breaks their vow. Or her vow, at least. I will not be silent. Bottom of 158. You aren't going to tell me you think you're still bound by the oath you made us all swear. What oath, Morgan asks. She says, I'll tell you. Taryn paid for it, paid dearly. Top of 159. We carried it almost on our backs every step of the way for Morvan until Ed Eladir came along. He helped us, certainly did. The way a robber helps you tidy up your chamber. Is this true? Morgan asks. Taryn doesn't answer. Why? He's held by his oath. His honor holds him. And Morgan says, I, I think she's telling the truth, but you don't say anything. You know, Eladir's story had a false ring to it. So, they go on. In page 160, they find Eladir in Morgan's camp. Bound, hand and foot. Face covered with blood, appeared so grievously battered, 
Terrence says, well, well, what's going on? Your warriors had no right. This is shameful, dishonorable. Morgan, you talking to me, kid? Okay. And so they get disarmed and bound. Chapter 19. Terran then accuses Morgant of being a traitor. Says, are you going to be a murderer? We're under the protection of Gwydion. He says, I don't care. I don't fear Gwydion. Why? Gwydion is powerless against the cauldron born. Terran says, you wouldn't use it. Morgant, really? <laughs> Do you believe so? Then you have more lessons to learn. This is the top of 162. You have more lessons to learn than that of obedience. The cauldron belongs to him who knows how to keep it and how to use it. It is a weapon ready for hand. Okay. Terrence, so you're going to make yourself a rival to Iran. He goes, no. No, I'm going to overcome him. I'm going to defeat him. I know my worth, though I've chafed in the service of lesser men than I, such as Gwydion. Now I see the moment is ripe. There are few who understand the uses of power and few who dare use it when it is offered them. The uses of power. Okay. Terence says, Gwydion refused this power when it was offered to him. Terran, uh, Morgan says, Gwydion refused it. I won't. Will you? Terran's like, what, me? And what does Morgan offer him? Join me and together we will rule the galaxy. You know, it's the father and son kind of. Terran, no. Morgan says, I'm not going to make this offer to Eladir. He's too prideful. Okay. Terran, why, why, why are you asking me this? What is Morgan really offering Terran? Uh, Terran? He can have, again... Like Orthu offered him everything he wants. If he swears allegiance to Morgant, he'll become a great hero. He'll become a great warrior. Okay. So, Morgant says, I'm going I'm to give you a while to think about this. And just so you know, page 163. Will you be first among my warriors, or will you be first among my cauldron born? That's your choice. Join me and rule with me, or be the first thrown into the cauldron. Taryn, go ahead. Throw me in. Do you now call me a fool? I know the secret of the cauldron. Yes, I know. I've been to the marshes. I've talked to the three ladies. Did you pay a price for the croaking? I, too, paid a price for knowledge of its workings. I know how to destroy it. I know how to make it yield a harvest of power. Morgan, but you are bold. You fear me. And there are many per day who do. Yet you defy me. And few do that. Okay. So, Karen and the others are left alone, bound and tied. Page 165. And... Bottom of the page, Terran says, I'm going to jump in the cauldron. If I get free, I'm going to jump in the cauldron. Arlanwi says, no. He says, don't worry. I'm going to accept what Morgan offers. I'm going to try, blah, 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 blah. We're going to skip a bunch and go to 168. We've got about seven or eight minutes left. Eladir speaks, wakes up. He apologizes and says, bottom of 168, I stole the cauldron out of pride, not evil. I swear to you on whatever honor remains to me, I would not have used it. I would have taken your glory for my own, but I too would have borne the croak into Gwydion and offered it for destruction. Believe this much, Terran says, I do. In fact, I believe it even more than you believe it about yourself. Okay? So, Eladir helps them, 171. Um, Eladir rushes from the tent. Morgant says, slay him. But before they can, Eladir throws himself into the black cauldron. It shudders. It's destroyed. Terran goes to 
Bella to your side, page 173. He's dead. Okay. And we see Morgan. He's dead now, too. And Gwydion comes in. Page 174. Gwydion tells Terran, Fluters told me everything that happened. And then he says, The Kroken is destroyed, and with it, Aran's power to add to the number of its cauldron board. One of the gravest defeats Aran has ever suffered, but I know the price you paid. Terran, no, I know. Eladir paid the final price. The last honor belongs to him. He has lost all else, even his steed. Ter uh, Gwydion. Or maybe he hasn't lost everything. Maybe he's gained everything. And his honor shall be cert certain. We'll raise a barrow to his memory, etc., etc. We'll raise a barrow to Smoit's dead, the other king. And we'll raise a barrel for Morgant. Now it's a barrel. It's a funeral mound. In other words, Morgant is going to be buried kind of with military honors. And Terran's like, what? He was a traitor. Bottom of 174. It is easy to judge evil unmixed. What does he mean, unmixed? Think. Today, right now, the last 100 years, so go back to 1919, name somebody in that last 100 year period that most people would say evil unmixed, totally evil, louder, Hitler, Hitler. Good, good choice, okay, very few people would go, no, he wasn't so bad. Most people say evil, unmixed. But alas, in most of us, good and bad are closely woven as the threads on a loom. Greater wisdom than mine is needed for the judging. What does he mean? I'm not going to be the one to quote unquote judge Morgant and send him to hell. Morgant served the Sons of Dawn long and well. Until the thirst for power parched his throat, he was a fearless and noble lord. In battle he saved my life more than once. These things are part of him, cannot be put aside or forgotten. And so I'm going to honor Morgant for what he used to be. And I'm going to honor Eladir for what he became. Notice, Eladir, until his last death, was what... Until his last breathing moments was essentially what? A rotten SOB. And then he did something good. And Morgant, for most of his life, was a good person. But he died being a rotten SOB. Okay? Shakespeare says in Julius Caesar, The evil that men do oft lives long after. The good is interred with them. That is, we don't remember the good things that people do. We tend to remember the bad things they've done. Okay? So, a uh, couple more minutes. Let's see here. They see Gwistle again, page 177, last page. They're riding on along, and Taryn is speaking. He says, It's strange. I had longed to enter the world of men. Now I see it filled with sorrow, with cruelty and treachery, with those who would destroy all around them. It's almost like he's saying, on the verge of manhood, can, can I just stop right here? Can I become like Peter Pan and go back to Neverland and just play for the rest of my life? Gwydion, yet enter, enter it you must. <laughs> you know, Taryn, you can't stop. you got to keep going. For it is a destiny laid on each of us. True, you have seen these things. But there are equal parts of love and joy. Think of Adeon. Okay? Think of your friends. Think of your companions. Why? They would have given up everything. All they possessed. Terran. I see now the price I paid was the least of all. The price he paid, the brooch. Why? It was never truly mine. I wore it, but it was not part of me. I'm thankful I kept it as long as I did. At least I knew for a little while. How a bard must feel and what it must be like to be a hero. 
Gridian, that's why your sacrifice was all the more difficult. You chose to be a hero, not through enchantment, but through your own manhood. That is, sheer will, sheer choosing. And since you have chosen for good or ill, you must take the risks of a man. You may win or you may lose. Time will decide. Okay? So, he says, uh, Gwydion says there with that final thing, it's why your sacrifice was all the more difficult. You chose to be a hero, not through enchantment. What was the through enchantment? You are willing to give that away. Okay? Now bear that in mind when you start the Castle of Lear. And bear that, you know, the kind of change we've seen in Terran from first book to second book and, and how he seems to be developing. And let's see if he continues that to the end of the third book. Okay, quiz Monday over Black Cauldron.